panel session now. So we're going to welcome back our guests from Top Desk and Hornbill as well. So Raffle and Pat. So thanks for joining us, everybody. I think we're going to go we're going to go live. So if you want to if you want to click on your your icon to share your screen, we should be hopefully in a position. Yeah, let's have a little look. There's Pat. Brilliant. Rafael, brilliant. Thank you, guys. If you if you're joining us as well, um, which I think it was I think it was Lawrence. Was it joining Hi, us? Yeah, yeah. Can if you, if you uh, we can if you want to join us on webcam please do so right it's okay, a, it's open, open try that. okay good thank you guys um yeah uh, it's it's a very interesting time i think isn't it um uh, we keep saying that it's been two years in in march it's and we keep saying the new norm it, and and change yeah yeah it has actually um and i think 2021 is going to be a crazy year to remember back and look back on so what what I, and i've asked you this every time we do this ask the same constant question what are your customers asking you about right now? What are their challenges? What are they asking you to try and help them with? And maybe we're going to start in order, right? So we'll start with Raphael, speak in order. So yeah, what's what's happening out there right now, Raphael? Well, it's uh, as, as you pointed out, it's been a, a, a tricky two years. And I think uh, when the, uh, the the COVID took everyone by surprise, the priorities of the IT service desk so, and IT departments were very different kind of to how they look now. Um, now that dust has settled somewhat and the new way of working has, has become normalized. I think um, what I, what we're seeing or what I'm seeing uh, from kind of my standpoint in particular is there's more, seems to be more of a move now towards consolidation of, of systems that were kind of previously procured prior to the, the, the sort of pandemic and the home working environment. And there's more of a drive towards sentiment analysis and understanding what does that mean in terms of what what the what do all these data sets mean in terms of qualitative metrics? Are our customers generally happy with the changes and the new new ways of working uh, going forward? Uh, and, and generally, I think this, this kind of everything mentioned kind of seems to fall under this uh, umbrella term of digital uh, transformation projects. And that's that's one of the things that's but it comes in different flavors depending on who you're talking to and what what stage in the journey that the customers are at. Yeah, thank you, Pat. Same question to you. If if I could, what what type of thing are you seeing right now? What are the bigger challenges? What what's the big the big sort of thing on the heat map right now? I think a lot of organisations are struggling with organisational change, and um, in many cases, this situation of leapfrogging between kind of remote working fully to hybrid working back to remote, et cetera, et cetera. And I think there's a final acceptance of the fact that actually this is a long haul, um, and we need to be doing something about it. So. We are seeing that without a shadow of a doubt. ESM has gone off the charts. So I don't think we come across any inquiries these days that haven't got. It could be just for IT to begin with, but there's a definite requirement. The thing that's blown up, I presented our kind of um, our, our data, our intent data. The thing that's blown up over the last little while is HR automation. That's huge now, uh, and actually somewhere 400 times its previous peak. So that gives you a good idea where that's coming mm -hmm. from. Um, and I think employee experience is a big thing. That's that's going to be huge. EX and CX, massive in, in the years to come. And yeah. I think it will redefine how we, we operate as IT organizations, without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Yeah, I, I, I agree with both those sentiments, guys. And Lawrence, maybe from you, do you echo that? Are you saying anything different, or does that sort of align to what you're seeing? That, that very much aligns to what we're seeing. I mean, the, the thing I think that people are struggling with is, a, I'll, I'll maybe talk a little different aspects of it as well as what we talked about, is that people need to move to uh, a results-based methodology. So, um, you know, before people would be considered working if they're in the office or whatever, but now people need to be able to send them jobs, understand what they're doing, um, understand when jobs are completed. So things like the, the adherence to SLAs, adherence to uh, response times, etc., is much more important now because you can't look over your shoulder at someone anymore. You've got to learn that kind of uh, remote working methodology and find new ways uh, to make that work. So um, I think a lot of emphasis in the tools on that, making sure that you know everyone's on the portal. We we one of the consequences of that is weirdly is we're moved a lot of customers from concurrent licensing to dedicated licensing because everyone needs to be in the system all the time now because that's how they're reporting back you know so so people need, you know because because you can't see what somebody's doing in the server room or whatever in the old days they, they now need to know when that's fixed when that's back so that communication is a much higher priority now 
Mm, good. We're going to move to this questions. I, I've got a host of stuff to ask, guys, and, and, and very funny enough about some of the topics that, that we've mentioned so far in some of the presentations. And we, hopefully we've got a chance to come on to at least one or two of those. I'm just looking at questions that we've got. Um, there's a couple of questions. There's one from Naveed and there's one from Julie in relation to asset management. Um, and they ask about uh, modules and integration of, of asset management and the capability in each of the tools and to demo as well. Now, we haven't got time uh, to do all that today, uh, uh, Naveed, but I'm sure that um, the, the guys that you listen to today will be able to help you with that if you want to see them demoed individually. Um, uh, and Julie asked the same thing about asset management. It includes the standard in each of, uh, of your solutions, guys. And we start again in order. So let's start with Pat first. Yeah, I mean, we, we've got um, discovery capabilities and kind of CMDB capabilities, all of those elements. But I think the asset management side of things uh, is now giving way to automation and completely, com completely. So automatic deployment of staff, um, you know, moving people in and out of groups. Um, and strangely enough, we're seeing more and more IT organizations basically saying, look, if you want to get your own kit, <laughs> that's uh, that's something we'll support. So um, seeing a big drive towards that at the moment. Um, how that will pan out remains to be seen, but uh, certainly configuration management and stuff like that, you could argue that with the cl cloud adoption of the cloud the way it is, it's equally as important, but more important to manage fewer things um, on a, a more minute level. And is that, does that, are these may be, a, you know, d direct guys, but is that, is that included in, in is uh, that model included in standard build for the home build stuff? Part? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I the management is fully included. CMDB is there. Yeah. Um, the ITOM stuff is a separate module, but that's kind of, that's behind the firewall stuff. The integration stuff that Steve d demonstrated, we've got about 800 integrations, um, and that's, easily available you just basically click on it all no code you know so yeah okay. automation if you haven't got it included in standard your tools these days you're uh, you're not going anywhere good thank you laura same to you then with a focus on asset management sort of capability and if it's included in standard yeah so, so absolutely um we do um our, our tool is a single tool that's built on a powerful cmdb center so everything is oriented around the cmdb and as part of that where things are actually assets, i.e. attributed value. It also does things like all the software license counting, software management, inventory management, which is slightly different um, from you know, just plain software management. So are the things real? Or, you know, effectively do things of individual serial numbers makes a difference to how you operate upon them. Um, so all of that's included in the system and we integrate into um, you know, all the most common uh, service management tools. And we actually give you all the connectors to all the Microsoft discovery tools free of charge. So you can literally just plug into your, your Microsoft um, infrastructure and off you go. And it will populate the CMDB with all the information in there. Lovely, that's great. Um, and again, sorry. So, sorry, just to say, on software, we also do that for a product called Snow Discovery because we found it to be an incredibly powerful license manager. License management's not as easy as it seems. It's secret sauce and why we're never going to replicate this ourselves is they have a whole team of people that build the database that relate all the, you know, in simple terms, but it's not as simple as this, but basically relate all the exe files to the names of the software packages. So their real secret is this massive database that when the discovery tools find the exe files, it doesn't just say, oh, you've got this list of exe files. It says you have this package, you have this package. It will reconcile and consolidate those so you then import a meaningful set of software. So we give that, we include that connector free as well, because it's just the only thing that really does that properly. That's good, thank you, Lawrence. And similarly, Raphael, same thing, uh, but capability and um, if it's including standard. Yeah, um, yeah. so there, there's, uh, there are three um, packages that come with top this on it. Asset management is considered a core module. And as, as for those that have seen the demonstration, it's. Uh, the capabilities were showcased there and that's the same um that's the full capability that comes with the the asset management module throughout all of the packages of top desk um that how far you can take it is is really a question uh of integrations capability versus na native capabilities so similar to what, what lawrence mentioned there uh there are some integration options with with tool sets that are simply experts at what they do so they, they 
provide the level of um, sort of software asset management, for example, that uh, we wouldn't consider to be our bread and butter. And similarly, there are other integration platforms like Zapier, which uh, Topless features as one of their 3,000 uh, apps that integrate with a host of different uh, applications out there. Um, so there's a whole raft of different things that you can do, but the core functionality that I showcased today would be the standard that's available uh, across every every package available. That's great, thank you. With more asset management, it's gone asset management crazy today. Another another uh, question from Clayton. Uh, Clayton's got a really good question, actually. It, it's quite in, well, it's quite quite detailed. Um, do any of the uh, any of the sort of um, applications uh, have asset management function that includes a running inventory? So things move, change, don't they? Things have changed a lot, right? So a running inventory option, and do they support scanning functions? I think you've mentioned that sort of discovery stuff. Um, and can it scan out a computer or an item uh, and know that we have X number left in stock? So that's really about real time. That that sounds like real time management. So as change is happening, um, and we we sort of we one of the questions I wanted to ask was about sort of data machine learning, automation. We talked about high our automation. And maybe, so let's let's cover that off. Have, have you got that? We'll start again the other way around, Raphael. Have you got that kind of capability in there? And is that something that maybe um, you're looking to develop, uh, maybe as part of that data thing, machine learning? I don't know. Yeah, so the, the new asset manager, as I showcased, is the only module that is written on this new architecture and that kind of, um, that kind of demonstrates the, the continual investment and development that's going on uh, in Topdesk within that module. So there are already capabilities there that are available natively, um, but Topdesk does generally rely on an import of data, a live um, or as close to real time uh, import of live data, wherever that comes from, a source file or a, a CSV. And we have customers that also want to create and manage the CMDB within the tool itself. So again, it's a, it's a question of, um, how that data is pulled in, what we do with with the data once it's in it to present it, you know, whether that's an inventory that somebody wants to manage. But in terms of there being an actual uh, client that sits on the machines, that's sort of where Topdesk relies on the third party marketplace integration partners that provide that level of visibility around uh, asset discovery and network monitoring. And does it keep that kind of sort of, you know, you, you know what's in, in stock, for example, if there's some hardware in real time as well through those integrations, yeah? It can do that, yeah. Either within the integrations, there's this other other kind of uh, widgets that bespoke widgets that can be can be created uh, to kind of query the data that's uh, that's in the system. That's there. And sorry, Lawrence, I should have come to you first on that one. It's your turn. That's all right. <laughs> sorry, I'm just sorry. Say, actually, you don't need in 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 Alemba, You don't need AI to do this. This is a core functionality our tools are always done as the full inventory management module. And the secret that we have built right in for years now is that it's connected to the workflow engine. So when people request things is automatically updating the CMDB. So you don't have to manually go as a part of the process, oh, now change this from four to five. All of that's completely automated. Um, and also don't, you know, as a, you know, as I'll fly the flag for item here, don't underestimate the power of a good change management process and change manager to enforce that process. Because in theory, everything you do should go through change, and you should know what happens in advance and your discovery tools should be just policemen in the ideal world. So every time you deviate from that, remember you're kind of cheating. So um, what, what we again have done is with discovery tools, it depends on your discovery tools, but if you want to, you can do real time inventory, like location management, and everything with your discovery tools, but you need to do a lot of setup in them. So you have to map all the ports to rooms, for instance. So if something knows it's on this network port, it knows it's in this room. You can, you know, and things like Intune, you can bring in the geolocation, but that just tells you where the person last reported the device. So it's less useful, but it's still useful, you know, well, it was still useful until two years ago to know where all the machines are in a building. That may be a bit of a mute point now. Mm -hmm. um, so how much use that is going forward, I don't know, but we used to do a lot of that. But to make that work, you do have to map the ports in your switches to the locations. And then I mean, you know if someone moves thing around because it's moved ports. Because it's moved ports. That's great. That's Thank you for that. Works. Yeah. Thank you. And we've, we've got a, just a minute or so left, um, Pat, for the same thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good question. Uh, so it's, it's really about sort of that real time uh, reporting flexibility around uh, around um, assets. Yeah, so so asset management is available within the, within the tool of standard. Um, but we hook into a whole host of various different asset management capabilities and, and larger 
IT operations management. So we got a nice home tool, which is behind the firewall. We also look into things like CCM and a whole heap of other stuff that actually provides that kind of live updated information um, just through the integrations. Brilliant. Well, guys, we're on time. And I, I've got like 60 million questions that we didn't get to, but it's really great, actually, that we've had that kind of detail, I think, come through. And um, we've had a couple of thanks. Um, Naveed, if you reach out to the guys you see today, they'll be able to absolutely offer you some of those uh, more in-depth um, demos, right? Definitely. And we've got the details, obviously, available. Uh, and Julie, who asked the second question about asset management, said, thanks. We had a fingers burnt on asset management capability before, right? So that's that's come from, uh, you know, come from experience. Again, um, Julie, there's plenty of opportunities to learn about each of the systems. Guys, it's been a fantastic um, to, to, to see you, even though it's in 2D. Maybe soon we'll get a chance to do 3D. You never know. I think um, I think, I think sits is uh, sits is in 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 situ uh, is live. I, I think I have my actually, Oculus headset ready. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. So I'm looking forward to that. Right. Hopefully, if that sort of still goes goes on. So thank you very much in, indeed, guys. Thank you, and um, we'll speak soon. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to do it again. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good. Okay. So we're going to go into a, a break then. Um, it's a chance to. Um, grab a tea and a coffee, um, and we'll be back at 12:50. So you can you can join us then. Let me just check on that. Sorry, no, I 